I really like using um, the uh, assessment for learning at year 13, especially when I'm teaching photosynthesis. I find that photosynthesis is a, a quite complex com topic and um, I find that using uh, questions and um, assessment for learning techniques for me has been a really good area to work on. So is it that you're um, looking for misconceptions in that area through your questioning or is it that you're looking for quality of answer or, or a bit of both? I think it's probably a bit of both actually. Um, one of the pieces of research that I was reading about was the common misconceptions about photosynthesis that lots of people share, this idea that plants taking their food through the roots. And I was interested to see from my students if they had that common misconception as well. Mm. So I set up a set of diagnostic questions that I used. I gave them um, time to actually respond to that themselves and to get some really detailed feedback. A combination of open-ended uh, open questions as well as multiple choice questions. And then it was also working out, well, why have they got these misconceptions? And I did uh, questioning, working in small groups and using a variety of different methods to sort of like delve into that. So what it seems to me that you're doing is that you're creating that opportunity to really get what's going on inside students' heads. You're trying to really tap into their understanding through your questions. Absolutely. It's important that you don't just uh, understand or find out what the students know. It's their understanding that's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really important for me. And then acting on that evidence. And then acting on the evidence, <laughs> thinking of ways in which we can go and, if it's a misconception, that we can go and teach around that misconception and maybe use experimental uh, techniques or looking at um, other data to go and actually try and um, teach them what the correct answer is and, and get them to learn for themselves what the correct answer is. Okay, okay. So in, in primaries, is that pretty much the same, Martha? Or? I think so. I think assessment for learning is such a useful tool for teachers. Andy was talking about using solo with the children, but actually as a teacher it also gives you a basis to think about where do I go with those more able learners? If they're at, if they've got lots of information already, how can I push them further? So having um, clear, clear criteria for a lesson based on some kind of taxonomy is also a planning opportunity for teachers. It gives you that, that understanding of where they really are and also their and a, um, a good tool for planning the next steps. How have you found it with training the children into understanding the language? Because one of the things you talk about is the language for learning, or just a language, the language for learning. And, and um, the children actually, even the youngest children, see words just as words. And what you find is if you start to use particular language with children, they, they understand what that language means. If they're having the experiences every day and they've got a really clear understanding of what you're doing to support them as a teacher and why, and they understand why you want them to be able to learn better, then the language just falls into place behind that. It's the understanding that's really key. And I think for primary school children, it's very important for them to know you want them to move forward and you're giving them the tools to move forward and they want to move forward because they believe in themselves yeah. when you do. I found that a lot of the um, students really like the language, mm -hmm. um, particularly because some of it is, is new to them and it isn't something they're using in everyday language. So when you start talking about metacognition and you're talking about thinking about thinking, learning about learning, those kinds of things, actually some of the students really like that. They like to go home and tell their parents what they've been doing. Um, and even some of the words from sort of solo that we might shy away from using, we might want to use sort of hand signs or something in the classroom instead. But actually the students quite like saying, I think I'm multistructural at the moment in my thinking on this to become relational, I need to. And that, you know, when you pick up a, a sort of uh, year nine student's book, who's perhaps not the most able, and they've written a sentence using those words about their learning, mm -hmm. they're, they're not just showing you that they're able to process and figure out where they're at, but they're also able then to move on from there. Um, so I think, you know, giving them that language and um, freeing them up to be able to um, take responsibility and move on from that on their own um, with you supporting them and with the other students in the class helping is actually a really attractive thing for students because it makes them feel a part of what's going on in the classroom.